today we will face some interesting challenges. I have ordered a cold drone float bar piece to make sure we have a perfect surface to easily mount the x-axis rails. Firstly, I made a 2D drawing out of my 3D model in ZW3D. Although I'm going to use some CAM generated G code paths, I decided to do some rough markings on the piece. I did some center marks with the wrong dimensions for the right screws and went to the rest of the features. I set the right work coordinate system and went straight to the hole making. I decided to use ZW3D's CAM software to generate the CNC paths for the holes and some mailed features. I divided the whole geometry to 3 pieces and 6 work coordinate systems due to the small work space on my mail. Here are all paths for each feature. For milling, I used the spiral cut method to dig into the material in each workpiece setup. I made the programs to mill the pockets for the bearings and some rough cuts for more tolerated geometry. Let's go with the drilling. Now the 2D pockets. And there we go with the bearing pocket. I switched to a bigger end mill and machined the rest of the material in this work setup. Second work setup and the first holes. The bigger the end mill, the more satisfaction during the machining. The chips are flying lovely with the steel. and the third setup. Each time I base on the side wall in the y-axis and hold centers in the x-axis.
Now the mounting bolt was a small issue, but there is nothing we can't overcome. Keeping good feed rates is crucial to get good effects in material machining. I'm definitely good at it, as you can see on the screen right now. I made the counterbores for the bolts heads with a counterbore mill. Now some M6 stepping. Everything would be cool if not one thing, physics. The plate has turned to a banana, I didn't consider that milling in a cold drown piece of steel will warp it so much. Using a filler gauge I measured that there was about 06 to 07 millimeters of space. To make sure what I just saw was real, I used a planned piece of steel as a reference. The gap can be seen using some light which goes through. And still there fit three pieces of 02 mm filler. Well, I decided to do it the hard way and try to bend it back. Although I managed to bend it about 2-3 millimeters in the middle, the hydraulic press was making cracking sounds, the spring back was so huge that I didn't achieve anything. Time I decided to do some no load accuracy test of the z-axis drive with the servo motor attached. I placed the plate on the bearing blocks. I tested it with a drill driver. After making sure everything is okay, I connected everything to the CNC controller and the PC. I set up a dull gauge and started to doing the tests. For a belt drive, the accuracy seems to be really good. No backlash is visible, so I guess the bearings and the bolt screw are okay too.
when I apply load with my hand, there is being applied positioning error, but the servo drive instantly corrects the position. The rigidity of the servo drive can be adjusted with the gain settings in the drive regulator. I didn't do it though yet. Applying load through the bigger pulley allows me to apply a bigger positioning error which is being compensated immediately. One of the characteristic features of servo drives is the resonance frequency. If you apply load, hitting that frequency, the drive will be getting into resonance, which could lead to malfunctions or even damaging the mechanical drive system. That's why setting the right servo parameters is important. Those parameters don't just affect the behavior of the system during usual work, but also could affect the resonance frequency, which can be scary. Once at work, during testing I managed to hit the resonance of the drive system and it scared almost the shit out of me before I hit the e-stop. I saved it from crushing the ball nut into the bearing in the last moment. Here are some accuracy tests of the servo system without no load but on a different speed. Although this servo at full speed and 1 to 2 pulley ratio is able to achieve about 7500 mm per minute feed speed, I don't think it will be needed in my life. I think about 3000 mm per minute will be enough for me. It looks very good though. I think that being scared of the accuracy problems with cheap server drives shouldn't be the case here. Well, I got back to the x-axis plate. And now the rails. To be continued in the next part. Thanks for watching.